Hey everyone, my name's Luke, welcome back to the channel. This channel is about rebooting my life and bringing my family with me. And I'm categorizing it into three, in, into three, three, three. I'm categorizing it into three buckets. That is physically, mentally, and financially. So this particular bucket that we're living within today is in that in that health bucket, in the in the physical bucket. So I'm interested, I've been interested in fasting for a long time, but particularly two kinds of fasting. One is intermittent fasting, and that's been a bit of a fad for a while, but uh, the other one that I'm interested in is autophagy fasting or water fasting for long periods of time for the purpose of uh, of cellular health, and I'll explain how that operates in, in a little bit, but I just want you to bear with me for a second. So this is essentially about me getting my body healthy and, and extending my useful life as far as I, I possibly can. Now, there are a number of ways of thinking about this, but we'll get into that in a minute. All right, great. So, so basically, here's what I'm doing. There's gonna be two experiments. So the first experiment is going to be a 72 hour autophagy water fast. The second is 30 days of intermittent fasting on an 18 six schedule where you're eating for six hours of the day and fasting for the other 18. All right, but before I tell you which one was a train wreck and which one was a win, let's talk about the science for a second so you understand why I'm punishing myself this way. All right, so I promised we'd talk about autophagy. Now, autophagy is a new term to most people. It was fairly new to me. And so I was reading up on some medical papers about it. And uh, this, is a th this is three major points that I came across that I think are important to understanding this. Number one, autophagy is a lysomal degradation process and protective housekeeping mechanism to eliminate damaged organelles, long-lived misfolded proteins and invading pathogens. Autophagy functions to recycle building blocks and energy for cellular renovation and homeostasis, allowing cells to adapt to stress. And I don't know about you, I've got stress. Adapting to that sounds like a good thing. So point two is that Modulation of autophagy is a potentially therapeutic target for a diverse range of diseases including metabolic conditions, neurodegenerative diseases, cancers and infectious diseases even. So it really doesn't matter what function that we're looking to improve in the body, it seems that these cells, retaining these cells does us damage and so getting rid of them is the ideal scenario. So the question then becomes like what and how do we do that? Point three. Since autophagy inhibition attenuates the anti-aging effects of CR, that's, that's caloric restriction, it's been understood for a very long time that uh, severely limiting calorie intake extends your life. Like if we're talking about like a third like, of your calorie intake, if you cut that down, you're going to live longer. Uh, unfortunately, the in the lab scenarios, it was demonstrated that that made the rats pretty depressed, but it certainly did extend their life. Anyway, it's been proposed that autophagy plays a substantial substantive role in CR mediated longevity. Among several stress stimuli inducers of autophagy, fasting and caloric restriction are the most potent non-genetic autophagy stimulators and lack undesirable side effects associated with alternative interventions. Okay, in English, that's saying that uh, fasting is the most desirable way because there are no real side effects to its usage. Whereas if you are trying to achieve autophagy by other means, there are nasty side effects that you don't want. And so the most effective and, and least side effect driven way to do it is by fasting. So in case you missed it, the reasoning goes a little like this. If you want to live for a long time, you need to purge your body of harmful, precancerous, misformed cells. The easiest way to do that with the minimum side effects is to fast for longer than 24 hours at a time. So that's exactly what I did. So I'm 18 hours into the water fast and I'm, I'm not feeling too bad. Uh, my energy levels are slightly lower, but not nothing I would think of as being out of the ordinary. Um, I did get reasonably good sleep last night, so I think that's certainly helping. Um, aside from that, the only thing that was kind of tough was preparing food for the kids that's not so good. So I'm 36 hours in. Um, 
uh, only have only been up for half an hour or so. Uh, again, I'm uh, I've just been noticing the my breath being bad, that sort of thing. But um, so far, so good. Still not feeling um, that bad energy wise. My uh, hunger, which I was feeling more so yesterday, at least so far hasn't kicked in yet today. And uh, I'll see. I'll see if how it progresses. Like once I get around breakfast time, which I'm almost up to now. So. Um, once I start smelling food again, I don't know what that's going to do, but technically, um, I don't know how to, how to pronounce it, but uh, ghrelin, I think it is, the, the hormone that's responsible to make you hungry, uh, that should deplete a, a certain degree each day. So, theoretically, I should be less hungry today than I was yesterday, so that shouldn't be a surprise, but I'm interested to see anyway. So, 45 hour update. Feeling fairly good. Uh, mentally, I'm starting to lack the sharpness that I expect. I, I'm okay with physical tasks. I can sort of stay on task, but mental things I find to be more challenging than I wish they were. Um, I decided to lay off heavy exercise this week uh, for obvious reasons if I'm fasting. So I decided to just go for a walk, which was really good. And uh, now I'm just in the, the forestry area near my place. I'm about to head home, but I wanted to give you guys the update. So, don't know how to tell you this, but I quit. <laughs> so, a couple of hours after my last update, I was home, my wife was not well this week, and the kids were getting progressively harder to deal with. I had work deadlines that I was trying to work on, and work deadlines, sick wife, looking after two small children, with fasting on top of that, I was becoming a bad daddy really quickly, and I, quickly decided that it was smarter for me to have some calories and start acting like a normal person, which is exactly what I did. So, um, and I don't regret that. It, I, it, it's a case of priorities, right? That's the whole, one of the whole basic tenets of what I'm trying to do with this channel is to set my priorities right. And, uh, I, and in this particular scenario, that meant eating. So I ate. Uh, I made it to about the 48 hour mark which which is great like I, I consider that a win anything over 24 i had already factored into my mind as a win so uh, it was still a great experience i didn't i felt great that i'd accomplished something but i didn't have like any euphoric feelings that oh now all of those bad cells are gone but i have faith in the science that says that they are and or at least a good amount of them had been purged throughout that time frame and the way i'm thinking about this is this is a housekeeping task that i can do every so often. It's not something that I'm going to do every week or every month, but it's something that I would look at doing perhaps a couple of times a year. And uh, uh, next time I do it, I'll see if I can go a little bit further. But um, I think 48 hours was a pretty good start. Okay, so that's autophagy fasting. Now I want to talk about intermittent fasting, and I want to give you the list of reasons why I think it was important for me to try it. So the first one I want to mention is insulin levels. Now, this is something that most people think of as being purely a diabetic con condition or a problem, but the way our body handles glucose, the, the way, how sensitive we are to the insulin that our body produces is, has something, has wide ranging impact on us, not just with metabolic diseases like diabetes, but even in more far reaching health conditions like uh, Alzheimer's, for example, how our body handles insulin and, and, and blood sugars is really important as to how we are going to battle those illnesses or even if we get them in the first place. And one that I found fascinating is epigenetics. So gene expression can be turned on or off by different stimulus to the body. And one of the ways this happens is with intermittent fasting. And so when we look particularly at the genes that are responsible for human longevity, we find that they are activated by intermittent fasting. Isn't that interesting? So uh, I'm fa I'm fascinated to try it from the perspective of potentially extending my life and protecting me against some of these diseases that I just really don't want to have. Another point is an obvious one, but it can help you lose weight, but also burn visceral fat, the fat that is on your organs that is definitely going to have a higher impact on, on your longevity. 
And the last one I'll mention is that it can reduce oxidative stress and inflammation on the body. And that's why some people recommend intermittent fasting as a protocol for people who suffer from inflammation-based problems like uh, rheumatoid arthritis, for example. And, and I find that very interesting. I don't know when that started happening. My grandfather was one of the worst cases you could imagine for rheumatoid arthritis. And so I wonder how he would have um, fared on a protocol like that. It would, would have been interesting to, to test it. But anyway, that is the list of reasons why I am keen to try this. So basically it just means that now I get to make breakfast for everyone else but me. So we're hitting the end of my eating window for the day. Uh, so that basically just means it's dinner time. Uh, I've got some roast, roasted potatoes in the oven, got some coleslaw on the oh, Stop it. And uh, planning to... Um... See, he's, he's throwing me now. Yeah, oh. I don't even know what I was going to say. Basically, food. Good. End of day. <laughs> Working with children. Fun. <laughs> Parenthood. <laughs> Worth it. Children. Ticklish. <laughs> I might be losing weight, but it's not like I'm eating tasteless food or anything. See, we've got um, stuffed potatoes. It's all plant-based. And... Um, Tastes pretty good if you ask me. All right, so what have we learned? Well, we've learned a couple of really interesting things. One was unexpected, one was expected. Let me start with what was expected. What I expected to change was my weight, and it did. I have always had a uh, strong emotional relationship with food, whether I am celebrating a win or I am feeling stressed by something, food is a go-to place for me. And that is why I find it easy to gain weight exponentially quickly. And that, at, at times in my life, like in my teens, I was up around the 116, 117 kilo mark. And most people don't know that or see that in me now, and so they don't expect that to have been the my history with food but now I try to keep myself in the low 80s at an absolute maximum because I know once I get far past that it's just too far to come back down and the lightest that I've ever been was 74 and it's in my adult life anyway that's the lightest I've ever been and I want to get back down to that because that's where I feel really good I've got a bounce in my step I, when I go running my my joints don't argue with me it's everything works really well that's where I want to get to and so at the beginning of this uh, of this experiment I weighed myself and I was almost 83 kilos. I was 82.7 kilos. And now at this end of it, I have weighed myself again and I was 78.3 kilos. Now in round figures, let's say that that's about five kilos. So in the, during the experiment of intermittent fasting, I did zip, zero zilch. The only thing I did was altered my eating times down to this 18.6 model. And doing that, I lost five kilos in one month. And I'm pretty happy about that. I, I think that is a great start and that gets me down, you know, I'm into the 70s and I'm on my way to my target and I'm planning to continue on this uh, program now until I do hit that target because obviously it's effective, right? And I get the added health benefits that we've already talked about. So I am really keen to stay on this program for now. The other unexpected thing that happened is that I found out that when you exercise self-control and temperance in one area of your life, it has a knock-on effect into all other areas of your life. And just simply having this victory in the food area, 
I have noticed other areas of my life, it has become much more easy to control my impulses. You know, self-control in general has been stronger, more powerful. It's like that muscle. The more you exercise the muscle, the more disciplined, the better off you're going to be in other ways. And so I guess I didn't really expect this experiment to go into other areas of my life beyond uh, weight control, but seems that it has. And I would recommend, even if you don't have weight problems, the idea of doing this as a, a self-control, a discipline building exercise, I have found to be incredibly valuable. And so I recommend you giving it a go. So I'm gonna leave that there. I will be back on the 29th of next month again with another video for you about rebooting your life. And if you, uh, have, you have any questions or there's a certain topic you'd like me to talk about, drop it in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And thanks for writing out this longer video with me. All right, see you guys.